Welcome back to SharePoint Charts Complete Training. In this session, we're going to do our first chart. We went into looking at how to summarize data and do workflow using Power Automate to automatically get totals. We don't actually need that for this first chart that we're going to do. With Gantt charts, we can just have a simple SharePoint list with a label field, which is usually the title field, and then just have a start and an end date. So this one's pretty easy to follow along, and you just need to begin by downloading your test data to start. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so here is my chart site. You should have a site that you're working from where you're going to do all your practice examples. We're going to be building lots and lots of different charts in this site. We're going to fill it up. So if you haven't already done that, make sure that you have a practice site. And the first thing that you're going to want to do is make sure you've downloaded the Excel template. We're going to generate our list from that. I've already downloaded my Excel template, so I'm ready to get that created. That's the first step that we're going to do. So what you want to do is go ahead and open up that Excel. And I'll just do that first and we're going to use a special function in Excel to get that into SharePoint. So this is what the Excel looks like when you download it. So you don't need to manipulate this data or anything like that. Uh, we do need to click on table design and then we already have a table called table one. We need to click on this export button and that's how we're going to get it to SharePoint. So just go ahead and click on that and you'll see the export table to SharePoint list option. At this stage, it wants to know the address. So you do need to provide it the URL for the SharePoint site, which should be used just for your training. So I'm gonna copy and paste that from my browser into Excel, just like that. And then uh, we want to give it a name so let's go ahead and do Gantt chart and then just click next. We do not need to enable this checkbox here. Okay, and it just gives me a confirmation. Everything should be fine here, so you don't have anything to worry about. It just confirms. It's going to map over the fields. It, it indicates the data type, so that's automatically detected. Okay, and that gives me a success dialog, and that's it. We don't need to do anything else with the Excel workbook. Now, if you go to your site contents in your site, you're going to find the newly created list. So there it is, it's just called Gantt chart. That's what I told it to name the list. So I can click on that. And just to keep everything accessible, um, here I'm gonna click exit grid view, and I'm going to uh, just, you know, make a link to this so I can get to it easily. So I'm going to copy that and then do a refresh. I'll do edit. Um, let's go ahead and make a new link. This is some practice work I was doing earlier. So um, I'll just paste that in say Gantt chart you can also do quick links on your home you're gonna see me do some of that throughout the training so um, I like those they're just easy to see so um, I'll go ahead and add that quick links web part to the home page uh, quick links I like to style those as large tiles and then just click add a link and I'm going to paste in a link. I'm just doing this for convenience because I know I'm going to have lots of charts as we go through the training and then I can pick an icon. I'm going to switch this over to something that looks like uh, something to do with charts. I'm not going to be too picky. I'm just going to pick something like that and republish my home page. Okay, 
So we don't have a chart yet. That's what we're getting ready to do. Um, we'll do exit grid view. And then <laughs> it keeps popping into grid view. I don't know why it's doing that to me. Exit grid view. Thank you. Um, and we've got everything we need for our Gantt chart. So this is just some dummy data to help move along your training, make it a little bit faster. So we need to go out to the SharePoint dashboard site and now we're ready to apply a template. Now when you're working with these charting templates, you do need to know the column names and that's really important. Those were already defined in the Excel. If you're ever having any problem with the charting template, what you should do is check the list settings and make sure you know the internal column name. The internal name is the name that's stored inside of SharePoint. Uh, and you can see that if you go into each of the individual fields, they'll show you how from the list settings screen. So notice at the end of the URL, that's the internal field name. And that's really important because sometimes SharePoint will assign different names depending on how you created those fields, you created those lists. So I'm just verifying those right now. So that's fine, everything's as expected. I don't have anything unusual going on there. So I can just pop back out and I'm ready to apply a template. Now I like to create different views. You can create lots of views in the same list. So that's certainly gonna be useful as we go along. So let's go ahead and do save view as Gantt chart one. That way I can have a list view and I can also have a chart view. Now over at SharePoint dashboards, I need to hop over to my Gantt chart template. All of the charting templates are at the top of the gallery page. Okay, so if you go to the gallery and then uh, look at the top, you see a long list of different charting templates that you can use. What we wanna do is go ahead and select the Gantt chart option. They're alphabetical, so you can scroll through and there's the Gantt chart right there. You want to make sure you're logged in. I'm already logged into the system. You'll see a preview pop up, which gives you an idea how the template works. Then you can start applying settings. The most important thing to do is to go ahead and enter your field name. So that's very simple in this case, this template. So you may have different field names when you're actually making your Gantt charts, but in our training example, it's really simple. We already know the field names. They're just title, start, and end. You have to make sure those are correct, and then you're ready to go. So before I do anything else, I'll just go ahead and copy that over, and we'll take a look and see how things uh, work with that. Um, I do need to change my dates, so I'll switch that over and make it for the current year. I'm going to copy that template. Make sure you enter the dates in the format labeled. I know depending on your location, that can vary as far as whether it's month, day, year, or day, month, year. But for your input configuration, make sure you follow the pattern shown. Okay, so I'm ready. I'm just gonna hop right back over to my SharePoint list. I need to go to the upper right and go to the view selector and do format current view, then advanced mode, select all and paste. Boom, just like that, your very first chart. Okay. So already I see some things that I want to adjust. So we'll just start manipulating this until we get it to look the way we want. One thing is I don't want to say my can chart. I want it to say um, something that's, you know, meaningful. That's just dummy text that's in there. So we want to go ahead and switch that over. Uh, one thing I can do is just edit this text and I'll just say um, projects, summary. What's easy is I can make little adjustments and just keep copying the template over and over again. And I can just paste over what I had and replace and you see it just updates immediately. So that's really handy. Another thing I don't like initially is Usually when you're looking at a Gantt chart view, you want to see kind of a, a progression. And what I want to do is sort my records so that this Gantt chart is more meaningful to me. What I want to do specifically, I'd like to see the projects where the start date's the earliest and have that progressing. You'll see what I mean in a second. So I'm going to 
edit that view and let's change the sort order on those records so this is more the way we would expect for a Gantt chart to be. So I just say, I want those sorted by start, ascending, and then I'm going to see something that's gonna be a little bit more meaningful to me. Now, at this stage, it's really just a matter of look and feel. You can have as many records as you want, but every aspect of the look of this chart is something that you're gonna be able to control. So you may have particular ways that you wanna do that, and that's all configurable through that template screen. For one thing, we've got all kinds of different theme options. So with all the charting templates, it will actually suggest as many as 10 different themes. Now you do need to be careful when you switch the theme selector, it does a reset on all the fields. So usually what you wanna do is modify the other settings. Um, and in that case, it won't reset the field data, but you might start with this just to kind of browse some different options until you get something that's more according to what you like. So notice I have to fill in the field names again, which doesn't take too long. And as I say, that just happens when you change over the theme option. And I need to fix these dates again. 1-1-2023 and 12-31-2023. Okay. Um, so again, I can just copy and paste back and forth as many times as I want. So format current view, select all, paste. And there you see it uh, change the look and feel. Let's look at some of the look and feel options just to you know see what it is that we may want to change. Um, you can change a number of settings. I'm not gonna cover that all here. Whoops, I need to switch the title again. Projects, summary. Okay, so uh, you know, the font family, I'll switch that back to Arial. Um, you may want to adjust the font size. Depends how many records. If you had a lot of records here, you might want to really kind of condense that a little bit. And in fact, you can make adjustments to all these things to really kind of pack it in um, however you want it to look. You have an option whether or not you want to show the date range. Normally you're gonna to wanna to see that information, but that just uh, provides a label below. And then whether you want the day count next to the bar. Generally that day count's pretty handy, so we're gonna to wanna to do that. If you do live in an area where you have a date range as day, month, year, you can actually make the display come out differently by using that option. By default, that's gonna be turned off. I can control the uh, row height overall. So that's where I was talking about. If you want to make this more packed in, you can do that. Notice I bumped that up a little bit. And then I can adjust the overall width of the chart itself. So maybe I want to bump that up slightly. Um, I can just make all these subtle adjustments until I get this looking just exactly the way I want it to look. Here, let's take off that screen. and you can see it adjusts. And then I can say, oh, maybe I want the, the bars to be a different color. To me, all that gray gets a little bit boring, so I usually like to do things looking a little different. So there I can switch that over to navy blue. And again, I just go back and forth, copy and paste, really easy, really fast. There, now we've got navy blue bars on the page. And as I mentioned, you should probably do different views. Um, let me refresh this page. I need to do a sort on this again. I'm not sure why, but I forgot my uh, sort by start. Save that again. There we go. That's the way I want to see it. So you can adjust the overall width of the chart. You can adjust um, you know, how, how packed in the rows are if you wanna condense those. Um, so lots of different options and you can control the date range. It could be, for example, you know, this might extend past the end of this year and I may need a wider date range. If that's the case, it's really an easy adjustment. I simply can come back over here and I can say, you know what, I need more room. And that kind of thing happens a lot with the Gantt chart. I might say, what I really need to do is go through 6 June 30, 2023, 
2024 because maybe I've got something extending into that year and all I have to do is adjust that date and you know just rinse and repeat I can just reapply that to my template so I just do format current view and you can see everything automatically adjust so now we've got the start date at January 1 and it's extending all the way to June 30 of next year and you can see the bars automatically resize so that they're going to show the appropriate start and end points and also when I hover over the bars I'm seeing a value there as well. So really the best way to work with this is to learn how to just make slight adjustments. It's not one of those things where you have to make um, lots of different settings and apply it one, all at one time. As you can see, it was just a copy and paste. What's really nice is that this preview screen shows you exactly what you're going to get in SharePoint. So as you make adjustments to this, you're going to know what you're getting ahead of time. You know, maybe I want to go to a light green background, um, and then I can do things like adjust the border color. Um, you know, I can see everything going on real time in this preview, um, so I don't have to guess at it. I don't always have to go to SharePoint, um, so that's very convenient. You know, maybe I need more width for the label. That's the left-hand side, so depending on the labels for your records, you may need a little bit of that. And then the bar height percentage, that's how much this bar is filling up its lane. So I can make that really fill the space more if you like that look. And then we've got the lane dividers. By default, I have it set on dotted. Um, you can switch that over to solid if you just like that look better. And, you know, again, it's just really up to your own taste in terms of how you want that to come out. But there's lots and lots of options. And what you should do is create more views for that. Instead of just, you know, overriding the same view all the time, I can just keep creating more views and then save you as, and I said game chart two. And then if I apply this template onto that view, that's going to be a unique view. So I can have both of those easily. So you may want to have multiple views of that chart and not just keep overwriting the view as I have been doing. And now I can just toggle back and forth between different views of that data. So that's very handy as well. That's all there is to it. This is the first chart that you're doing. So, um, you know, that gets you out the door. We're going to do, uh, you know, 25 different chart types ultimately. Um, so I hope you found that interesting. This is a series of walkthrough tutorials where you're going to actually have the materials. And you'll be able to produce the charts exactly what I'm demonstrating on the screen because I'm giving you the workbook which you can use to create your list in SharePoint and then you just need to use the SharePoint dashboards templates and apply those on the screen. So what we're doing, we're going to work through progressively. You're going to start out with really easy to understand charts just to build up your confidence and be able to get those um, under your belt and then as we go along we're going to get into more interesting and sophisticated chart types as you build up those skills. So this is going to be a complete training where you're going to be able to do any kind of chart that you can think of um, inside of SharePoint um, using these templates. So I hope you found that interesting and uh, just try to work through these trainings sequentially as they are in the link provided below the video. And if you have any questions, be sure to post them under the video and I'll try to answer those for you and help you if you get stuck. Good luck.